welcome. Welcome to each and every one of you. Welcome to this, our virtual service. Welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Haverhill, brought to you from my home. I'm Sophia Lyons, your intern minister, and the Reverend Frank Clarkson, your minister, and our beloved member and worship associate today, Neil Ferreira. It's so good for us to gather and be together and be with you today. I also want to put out um, a most special praise and thanks for Ginny Lingar today, who you've already heard playing the piano. All of these pieces were most lovingly recorded from her home with, might I add, seven cats and three dogs giving her a run for her money. I say that she's a miracle worker for that, and we are so grateful, Ginny. Thank you. Mostly, we send you greetings and love. You are in our hearts today and on all days. I really hope you know that. Just a few announcements. Um, you will find on the YouTube channel a Time for All Ages that our um, Director of Religious Education, Claire, has brought to you. I hope you will find the time to gather with your young ones, gather without your young ones, and enjoy it. And also, every Sunday, um, we have a live 11 a.m. virtual coffee hour. And I so hope you will bring your coffee and your snacks and your treats, come as you are, and be together. After that, um, at 12 o'clock, Linda Sanchez, we're so grateful, is offering her reflections group. Normally, this takes, pla takes place in the back of our sanctuary in a lovely circle for those looking for a quieter time, a reflection. Well, now you can do both. You can enjoy coffee hour and take the time you need with folk to reflect and be together in a different way. We hope you are checking our website for all the upcoming virtual ways of gathering and ways to support one another throughout the week, reading our uh, e-newsletter. Frank and I have begun blogs, which you'll find also on our website. We're doing our best to not inundate you with emails. Um, and for those of you who are still feeling disconnected or confused by the technology, uh, please do reach out. Please do reach out. Let us, let us find ways that you can feel um, seen and loved and connected. You know, normally after our welcome and announcements, we turn to greet each other in our sanctuary. And I so miss that. And I know you do too. I would ask instead that we take a moment to silently extend our hands to each other, to just pause and recognize that while we are not in each other's physical presence, we can still return to one another. We can still feel the presence of one another. This circle, this circle is still intact, my friends. You know, about a month ago, I offered you an invocation written by the great Sufi poet Hafiz, and I would like to gift it to you again today. It is called A Cushion for Your Head. Just sit there right now. Don't do a thing. Rest. Just rest. For your separation from God, from love, it is the hardest work in this world. Let me bring you trays of food and something that you like to drink. You can use my soft words as a cushion for your head. And so you are now most faithfully called 
to worship. Now is the time in our service when we light our chalice, a symbol of our free faith. This morning, Sophia will light our chalice remotely from her home. Please join me in the words of our chalice lighting, our unison affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. Thank you. It is so good to be together in whatever ways we gather. And over these last couple of weeks, I have been moved and struck by how our different online gatherings and phone calls and even emails offer ways to connect that still carry the feeling and the connections of the spirit that we have in our community. I'm not saying it's the same, but I am so grateful for those. And one of the things I love about church is that it's a y'all come, we're all in this together kind of thing. It's us banding together to do and be what we can't do and be all by ourselves. And one of the ways we do this is by offering our tangible financial support to this congregation. And the needs that we have as a church to pay our staff and pay our bills don't stop when we are not in the building, they continue. And so we are grateful in these trying times for everything you can do to help. In a moment, you'll see information on the screen about how you can give electronically. You can also still mail your checks into the church office. And there will be a link on the YouTube description of this service where you can click there um, 
But however you give, know how grateful we are. Our morning offering will now be gratefully received. Let us now drop down into our time for prayer and meditation and silence, beginning, entering into this time as is our custom with singing. We're gonna sing Return Again. I'm going to sing it and I hope you will join in as you wish and are able. Return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. Return again, return again. Return to the home of your soul. Return to who you are. Return to what you are. Return to where you are. 
born and reborn again, return again, return again, return to the home of your soul. We begin our prayers most Sundays with your voices. You saying aloud your joys and your sorrows, you asking for prayers for those you love, those known to you in need or trouble. And so let us do this now. Wherever you are, let us enter into prayer and begin with a moment of quiet in which you can name silently or aloud those joys and those sorrows and those people you are holding in your hearts and prayers this day. And let us pray. Holy One, your spirit fills the universe. You are in each of us and around us and between us. Help us to remember this, especially in these days. Help us to be mindful of your presence in our lives and in our world. We pray this day, especially for those who are out there serving in so many different ways for nurses and doctors and aides and housekeeping workers and hospitals and nursing homes and doctor's offices. For those who are working in law enforcement and at the homeless shelter and at the food pantry and at the fire department and in so many different ways of serving. We pray for the cashier at the grocery store and the bagger. We pray for those who have been pressed into service as homeschool teachers. We pray for those who are feeling stretched or stressed these days. Dear God, pour out your balm on our aching hearts, we pray, so that we might be strengthened in spirit and renewed in courage, so that we can do this work, whatever it is we are called to do these days, to be a presence of love, and reconciliation of hope and care. We give thanks for those who help us and companion us. We give thanks for this beautiful world, for this community that we are a part of, for our global community that we are more aware of for your love and your spirit in which we live and move and have our being, and in which we now continue our prayers for a moment in silence.
for all that is this life. We give our thanks and our praise. Blessed be and amen. 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 Our reading for this morning is the poem Fault Line by Robert Walsh. Did you ever think there might be a fault line passing underneath your living room? A place in which your life is lived in meeting and in separating, wondering and telling, unaware that just beneath you is the unseen seam of great plates that strain through time and that your life already spilling over the brim could be invaded, sent off in a new direction, turned aside by forces you were warned about but not prepared for. Shelves could be spilled out, the level floor set at an angle in some seconds shaking. You would have to take your losses, do whatever must be done next. When the great plates slip and the earth shivers and the flaw is seen to lie in what you trusted most, look not to more solidity, to weighty slabs of concrete poured or strength of cantilevered beam to save the fractured order. Trust more the tensile strands of love mm. that bend and stretch to hold you in the web of life that's often torn but always healing. There's your strength. The shifting plates, the restive earth, your room, your precious life. They all proceed from love, the ground on which we walk together.
when the great plates slip and the earth shivers and the flaw is seen to lie in what you trusted most. Look not to more solidity. Trust more the tensile strands of love. Mm -hmm. Words for this time. These have been hard days, haven't they? Strained, I would say. Not unlike a sudden, unplanned for tectonic plate shift. And hard for so many reasons, right? All of us have our own personal ways to define hard. And I know that we are all being rattled in so many different ways. All of them matter. And I really hope you hear that. And all that you carry, all that you carry matters. All that has spilled out onto the floor, all that you might have lost or you fear to lose matters. It matters. And I join you in the weightiness I join you in the strainedness of this time. I join you, I join you because I am human. And I also say to you to take heart, take heart for all is not lost. All is not lost. I want to share with you, maybe I'm not alone in this, I don't think that I am, that amid some of my most depleted moments these past weeks, I have found that the simplicity, the simplicity of a walk around my neighborhood has helped me to find my way back to myself, right? Just, just a bit to settle. And it's funny because walks my family and I have taken for years seem as of late to take on a whole new sheen suddenly. And I, I must admit that maybe it is the urgent desperation for relief. But I and even my daughters have been noticing wondrous things. I... I have often found this to be true in my life, that the beauty of the earth and all its teeming life, including us humans, somehow comes into sharper focus, right? Turns almost technicolor when seen through longing, hungry eyes, not unlike the indescribable wonder of water when you are desperately thirsty. And on Tuesday, which was a particularly hard day for one reason or another, my daughters and I on our walk spotted a massive pine tree just at the end of our street that had gone completely unnoticed these past, past six years that we've lived here. Suddenly there she was mm. standing about a hundred feet tall. How could we miss this, right? A hundred feet tall, gracing our well-worn corner with majesty. We stopped in our tracks and just stood there. I tell you, it was as though we had never seen a tree before. And out of this moment, this time of silence, silent awe, which it was, my youngest daughter, Poppy, said that the tree looked like a lady holding up her fancy dress and curtsying. 
And she was right. Something about the way that the, her arm-like branches curved up at the ends. She, she was right. It was lovely. And we did what anyone would do. We curtsied back. Mm -hmm. And it was such a sweet, heated moment. Standing there enjoying this massive curtsying lady now being pulled at and run around by my kids. I began to notice also the way the branches cascaded down from the top, crisscrossing over each other, almost like, like weaving lattice. But really like outstretched arms and hands holding each other in concentric circles, supporting each other, guiding each other, some ends just barely touching others, reaching and stretching out for one another as if to say, almost, almost, almost there. Maybe it is my fragile state these days, but I'd like to think that tree offered me something that day. I tell you, it felt like a great and wondrous vision of love. A vision of love, plain and simple. Trust more the tensile strands of love, writes Robert Walsh. The tensile strands of love, stretched, reaching love torn, fragile, but always healing. There is your strength, he says. There is your strength. So often I look for firm foundations. Am I alone in that? Solid, unshakable footing, something to count on with proven certainty. I don't think I'm alone in that. Maybe we all do. Maybe we all do. Maybe this is just how we're wired. And maybe our work in this life isn't so much to banish this good want, this good, good hope for ourselves, but rather to find it in unexpected places, in unexpected people, and out of un expected shaking moments like this to widen our gaze. Maybe it's the search that is the thing. The search for simply put love in all its unexpected forms in the hands of all its unexpected messengers. And the thing is, it's everywhere. Our work is to see it, to trust it, to notice it for what it is, which is nothing short of utterly divine. Because what else is love but this? And I've been finding lately as with my encounter with the great lady at the end of my street with arms wrapped around arms in a stunning circle of dancing, curtsying love, it's been the simplest, but nothing short of transformative. It's been the simplest of things that has brought me the most solid footing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My daughter's small fingers carefully placing seeds into the soil. An ant carrying a crumb home. A shared smile with an anxious stranger in the baking aisle of the supermarket. Bags of sugar in hand eating a banana, 
miraculously brought to us from the tropics, picked by hands we will never know, from groves we will never see. A fresh coat of paint in your favorite room. The soft coat of an animal you love asleep in your lap. A glass of water. I could go on and on, and I feel certain you could add countless more too. And I hope you will. How easy it is to miss these moments, sweetnesses that could so easily be walked by or performed day after day without a second glance or thought. Now you might say yes, these are lovely, Sophia. Lovely. But love, isn't that a bit of a stretch? And I say to you that love is exactly what these are. I say, let us expand our definitions of love to be that which is wide and roomy, where the tiniest, the least of these becomes the greatest. And out of this expansive, zoomed out vision of love, well, well then life is suddenly overflowing with it. Mm. Overflowing with it. And I tell you, this is the kind of life and world I wanna live in and I wanna live it well. And I want you to as well not just because of this difficult, hard moment, but because it's been gifted to us on all days. And it's a divine gift. And I tell you, divine gifts are meant to be noticed and meant to be enjoyed and meant to sustain us and bind us. Especially, especially when the world tilts when the great places, when the great plates slip, especially then, especially then. And so, my dearest of friends, as you move into your week, take a moment to notice where love is in your lives. Notice the love that requires your attention a not so easy to spot kind of love. Write it down, record it as you would a rare bird. Photograph it, treasure your lucky, lucky sighting and share them, share them with each other, gift it to someone in the same way it was gifted to you. I really do hope You'll take me up on this. So let me close now by lifting up Robert Walsh's beautiful words once more. When the great plates slip and the earth shivers and the flaw is seen to lie in what you trusted most, look not to more solidity to weighty slabs of concrete poured or strength of cantilevered beam to save the fractured order. Trust more the tensile strands of love that bend and stretch to hold you in the web of life that's often torn, but always healing. There's your strength the shifting plates, the restive earth, your room, your precious life, they all proceed from love, the ground on which we walk together. And so I say, amen and blessed be.
And now, would you please join your voices with mine from wherever you are as we sing the hymn, I've Got Peace Like a River. Join me in the words we say to extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And so my blessing and benediction to all of you as you leave this time together, may you be refreshed. May you look to love as a cushion for your head, a comfort and a place to rest. And may you know that in your search for peace and hope, your search for love, that you are not alone that you are not alone, that we are all seeking, that we are all adjusting, and that on many days we are all 
weary. In this, in this, we can take solace. And in this, we can find strength. Blessings and endless, endless love to you all until we meet again.